Little well, actually, driver, did you make them static? Yes. Then it won't. It shouldn't matter, actually. The, pro the problem is, is that why don't you know that? <laughs> well, we definitely have plenty of time to do this one, right? So I, I, I think I'm officially going to say that Skippy's was competent. <laughs> it's actually funny that Jamber's talking about the exact part of his code right now. <laughs> You could have just walked through the string backwards. I would have. Yeah. And instead of done uh, I plus plus two I minus minus. Right. Hey, that's what I did. I did. Yeah, I used a bunch of four each. This is, yeah, this is fine. You, you, yours, is, yours is reasonable. All right. At the end of class, you should burn all the incompetent tests. It's a dramatic. You have a pretty big In fire. <laughs> right now, it's uh, three to three to two incompetent. Sounds like a like a bowl game. So three two in the count. Wait, two in the count like that? Yeah. Or two in count. Oh. Two in the count. Oh. All of these numbers are the same. Oh. Two in the count. 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 Oh. Two in
You mean when it's airing out? Well, it's airing out. I'm using that very I don't know which pile to put Simon's in. Can we go half and half? Yeah, I mean... Just right down the half. it in half, put it in one and half. It's, 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 it's better than the previous attempts. I know Well, your count vowels did return a string. Yes. So it's. You just lost a powerful ally. <laughs> Joey, you have a little phrasing on yours. <laughs> Which I think is. How could there possibly be phrasing? I think, I think that in and of itself, my statement was phrasing. <laughs> Driver dot reverse string moist vowels. <laughs> oh, it's not what? supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's some powerful phrase. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, Beaker, you have an array index out of bounds exception. Uh, no. Uh, I equals s dot length. Should be s dot length minus one is the last legal bucket. Mutual, we love each other packs with the AI. Does anybody have the uh, email address for the uh, the campus? Uh, the no. Well, somebody should call campus safety, but also uh, is there like a somebody to talk to? Oh, counselor. Counselor. I assume you mean artificial intelligence. <laughs> Oh, we definitely have more competent ones. Yeah. Let's, let's, I'll read. I'll read the. Uh, I'll read the competent people. <laughs> <laughs> 
Skippy. Competent. What? Jamber. Competent. Baker. Carry. Vander Snoot. <laughs> Vander who? Vander Height. Is that a thing? Is that what your volleyball jersey says? You have an ultimate frisbee jersey? Is there like an official? There's an official ultimate frisbee team and you're on it? Are you? So he's like legit at ultimate. He's like God. Is he? So he is. You are to volleyball as he is to ultimate frisbee. Yeah, but it's kind of a conceited. Right that's kind of a conceited thing for you to say. <laughs> okay, so Vander Height. That's it. Does the all right? All right. <laughs> Coleslaw, competent. Stop looking at me. Tiffany, competent. Oh yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> Beaker? Competent? <laughs> Tina? Don't look at the back. <laughs> and Matt. The rest of you were incompetent. All right. Let's look at this. This is an improvement because this was let's see, one, two, three, four. Only five people were incompetent. Yeah, and actually, Simon, yours was the closest to be competent out of the incompetence. Well, I, I, I need to double check something. You could turn it back into a string, send it back into the string. <laughs> You're going to get two years Yeah, yours was closest. All right. So what was the question? <laughs> Write a Java method that takes two strings as parameters and returns the string with the most vowels in reverse. We're going to write a method called count vowels first. So I'll create a string with all the vowels in it, upper and lower case. Is that how you say that? Yeah. We'll spin through the string that we're passing in. Now, for those of you who are in the incompetent pile, maybe the rest of you should take some notes because some of these might end up on your final. Just uh. Well, I said, for those of you who are incompetent, definitely take notes. Oh, yeah. But oh, even yeah. some of the rest of you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes more sense. So we have no vowels found so far. Here's a string with all the vowels in it. We're going to spin through S, which is the string we passed in. If S dot char at I, that's the current character that we're interested in, right? We're going to say if vowels dot index of that dude is not equal to negative one. That means he is a vowel, and we'll say count plus plus. In the end, we'll return count. So vowels.index of a character, the current character we're looking at in S, if that guy is a vowel, that is when we try to find him inside of vowels, if it's not equal to negative one, that means he exists somewhere in that string. We'll increment count. Okay, so that's count vowels. So here's reverse. So we'll write our loop that goes from the end of S 
to the beginning of s. So we'll start at s dot length minus 1. And length for strings, speaker, is a method. Not in your paper, it wasn't. Sure. Yeah, you left it like that. No. Uh -oh. so you really know what you risk going into the incompetent pile? Well, no, I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. Like, I made sure I did that. You know the last one? Int i equals s dot length. No opening, closing parentheses. You did it correctly up here, but not down here. All right, that's that length. Keep going as long as i is greater than or equal to zero. Um, i minus minus each time, because we do want it to be equal to zero, because we can get the very first character. We'll say answer plus equals s dot char at i. Return answer. So there's reverse. Static string quiz S one S two So we'll get the number of vowels in S one. We'll get the number of vowels in S two. If S1 count is less than S2 count, just like that. It says we're supposed to want return the one with the most vowels, right? Yep. So if S2 has more vowels in it than S1, that's what this says, we'll return S2. Otherwise, we'll return S1. So that's the top level method. First two lines, count the number of vowels in each. Then we ask a question, which one has more vowels? If it's S2, return S2 in reverse. If it's S1, Return S1 in reverse. The tie goes to S1, as I currently have it written. But what you write didn't matter. You could have made the tie go to S2. There's reverse. Simple little method. Spin through a string backwards. And there's count vowels. Simple little method using index of, one of our problem-solving tools, for determining whether a specific char is a member of a set. Starting to see a pattern here on problem-solving? They all kind of are using the same collection of tools. Weren't you in the competent pile, Tina? Yeah, that's joke. <laughs> I was pretending. Like I was, I was pretending like I was a nincompoop. Like a, like Did you say nincompoop? Yep. Yeah, and he said it like really drawn out too. I want to make sure it was understood. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so. You should know that on your final exam in here, there's going to be several questions like this. There will be compiler questions as well. But there will be several programming questions like this. I would say at least half of the exam will be questions like this. So I would suggest you start getting better at doing this stuff now. Hopefully you're seeing that none of these are difficult as long as you break them down to individual pieces. Just by me giving you this little hint here that Joey said wasn't even a very good hint, it helped you solve the problem. Take that as a hint that before you start solving a problem, just don't just start writing down code. Think your way through the problem a little bit. All right? Questions about that? All right, now, your homework assignment was you were supposed to implement the expression portion of uh, 
if else if, right? Is that a correct statement? Somebody validate what I'm saying. Yes. That's if else. Yeah. yeah. But you were supposed to add the ability to handle expressions. Yeah, just, just one kind of expression. <laughs> it was due today. Oh, really? So just in case you... It's so early that I forgot. All right. So for our if statement, both of these versions, if expression statement, if expression statement, else statement, you were to add the ability to deal with expressions. Now, what kind of expression? Literal and identifier expressions. Just these two. Okay. Well, what's a literal? What are things that are literals? Numbers or literals? Mm, you didn't have to have Boolean expressions. Not incorrect. They, I guess that's true. In your model here, though, probably those would have been flagged as identifiers. Would be my... Huh? Already? So under language reference? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we did do true and false special cases. So 0 through 9 and true false. I don't care if you didn't make it work for true false, but I did give you this code, so... That's not really a good excuse not to use it, but whatever. Um, we also treated single quotes and double quote as literals. Okay. Um, so that's what a literal is. We'll just say for, for simplicity's sake, any of the numbers, 0 through 9, are literals. What are identifiers? Things that look like variable names, right? So everything else. So in our code, we needed to support an addition on our look ahead syntax. So inside of our if, so if we're looking at something that is a reserve word and we're looking specifically at an if, we print it out saying we match the if, blah, 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 opening parenthesis now. After the opening parenthesis, but before we match the closing parenthesis, we need to match an expression, either a literal or an identifier. Correct? Well, how do we match an expression? Oh. Okay, well we're gonna we're going to pop something off of the stack, right? Now if I let me remind you of something here. Under lexical analyzer we mark all lits by starting it with lit. We mark all identifiers by starting it with ID. Correct? Okay. So we can read in lp.pop, like that. And what we're interested in is what kind of animal that is. What does decompose do?
So is it going to give us, it'll give us everything before that, this part? That's fine. So we'll just look at, uh, hold on. Oh, but it, it takes this last piece off. Length minus one. So it's going to give us, for a lit, it'll give us that as the first part. And just whatever the token was is the second part. Is that correct? I think so. So what we can do then is we can say this dot decompose L dot LP dot pop at bucket zero. If expr dot equals lit or expr dot equals what does id look like Uh, we'll make this easier then. I'm not going to decompose. No. <laughs> so we'll get the value. Okay, so if it's true that our expression contains lit or contains ID, then we'll go ahead and um, I guess let's just print it out for the sake of time since we're out of time. We'll just print out our expression. Else, we'll give ourselves a little error message here, just system.out.println. Illegal expression. Okay, does that mostly solve the assignment? I think we may, I think I might have told you to fix some little bug with or if else or something like that, but regardless, this is, this is mostly what you needed to do for your assignment, that part right there. Shouldn't have been too tough. Questions, comments, concerns, bribes. Is it a bribe? Question. Yep. The final for this class is going to be on Friday, the final week. Is there any way to take it earlier? No. Um, well, the official time will be that Friday. If you are leaving town earlier and you need to take it earlier, just email me or something. We can arrange something. Um, I don't want everybody to do that. So, um, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I guess if you really have to, you can, but the official meeting time will be that Friday. Yeah. Because I know there's some other professors. I had a student earlier. I guess there's a professor that's moving all their exams to Monday just to get them done earlier. Which I you can't do that. No, you can't. I am the king of rule breaking. Okay. And I would not do that. They're changing their exam time. It's like yeah, I mean, set. there's a reason the exam time set is so that students don't. I, in fact, I even think there's some sub rules that yeah, say, like, if you have more than two exams on one day, you could move one. Whatever it is, there's some rule. I don't know who the teacher is. I, I mean, it's just a random student that mentioned it. So, you know, they may have been making it up for all I know. But I, you know, it sounded legit enough. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, just email, email me or something. That way I can, I'll get it created ahead of time. I'll, I'll make the exam for whoever wants to take it the earliest. That's when it will be created. <laughs> and then I'll just have it on hand <laughs> from that point forward. Okay? Test me! But officially, what, what is it, Friday at 110 or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the official exam time. I don't care if you want to take it earlier, personally. But that's when we'll be here to officially take that exam.
Okay? All right, I'll see everybody on Wednesday.